everybody's talking about the Academy Awards. So I, I love it. It's just generating so much interest. I'm right in the front taking tickets. I, they tell me this one's good, this one stinks. So I know pretty much, you know, what, what everybody wants to say. Want the real scoop on the hottest movies? I'd like to write something from the point of view of the help. I'm the backup parent, the understudy. Then you need to go to the front lines, where independent theater owners like these hear it directly from the fans like these. And you have a lot of the same customers week after week. Welcome to the small business side of the big time Hollywood glamour machine. It's an expensive business. You know, nothing is cheap in this. Nothing is cheap in this business. The problem with being independent is that you have to spend a lot of money to keep up with the chains. Jesse and Greg Scarola are two brothers who own and operate one 12 screen movie theater called the Atrium on Staten Island. It's one of the few remaining independents in New York City. The independents, it's, it's a dying breed. You know, the old guys are looking to move on, and there isn't too much new blood coming out there. The big chains really put a dent in them. With only one location in a major market, they see themselves as small fish struggling to survive in a tank full of whales. I believe what you really want to know is, you know, how does a small business, a family-oriented business, function in the land of the giants, you know, amongst the, the big chains, the regals, the AMCs? He's right. And according to Greg, part of their secret for surviving alongside the big guys is that they study and imitate the upgrades done by the big chains. So you watch and see what they're doing and keep up. You know, don't fall behind. We make sure the seats are, are, are new, up-to-date seats. We change the, the sound equipment and the movie equipment all the time. We renovate the lobby. We, you got to do everything. Go there yourself and, you know, take a look around. Say, this is a great idea for our theater. Maybe we can make this work at the atrium. Just follow, take their lead. Follow them, you know? Keeping up like this can result in some confusion for customers, which is exactly what the Scarolas want because ticket buyers are thinking of their theater in the same league as the big chains. It's not necessarily, you know, one of these old-time, you know, independent theaters, you know. It's, it's current. Uh, they, and hence, they think we're part of the chains. <laughs> we're not a Regal theater. We only take Atrium. A lot of people come here with the coupons for, for Regal and for AMC and say, do you take that? And we've got to explain to them that we're an independent. Uh, I think it's the appearance that we give off. Maintaining state-of-the-art appearances like this isn't easy. For one thing, it takes a lot of money. You've got to go out and get rid of all your old equipment, which is hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of dollars of equipment, throw it away, and put a new digital projector in here for more, you know, hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of dollars. We're constantly changing things. After we finish one project, we start another. Some of the smaller guys just can't afford it. You know, it's, just, it's not cost effective for them. That's how these two got into the movie business in the first place. Ghost Rider played well with us last time. The previous theater owner couldn't keep up after a big chain opened a complex nearby. When Regal came and opened up, it took away a good portion of his business, probably about 50% of his business. You know, he struggled. He was an old operator. He wasn't a young guy. The previous theater owner's threat to abandon the business would have been a disaster for the landlord. He just pretty much threw in the towel, thinking, hey, listen, I'll ride this out as long as I can. I won't reinvest into, into the operation anymore. And once it's time to leave, it's, I'll just, you know, turn in the key and that was it. And that's essentially what he did. That's where Greg and Jesse came in. They thought the problem with the theater wasn't the competitive market but the rundown condition of the facility, which was turning off customers. They don't want to go to the old place that everybody's been to when it's run down. They want to go to the new place. You know, it's the same thing here. You have to keep upgrading everything. Staten Island is densely populated. There's, you know, roughly 450 to 500,000 people here on this island. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good amount of people that want to go see movies. Jesse saw what the business used to do and said, let's not give up yet. They've been running things now for about seven years, and they've been upgrading slowly as they can afford it. We had to really come in here and just do a major overhaul, cleaning up, as, you know, to begin with, you know, paint, clean the carpets up, clean the bathrooms up, everything spotless, you know, screens. And then as we went along and the uh, theater would provide us with some income, we just reinvest that back into the business. Like many small business owners, they say upgrades are one of the keys to their success. Give back. Give back. Put back into the business. 
That's the secret. But that's not all. The other key to their success is their own hard work and attention. We do everything. You know, I take tickets most of the time, I clean the theaters, work the candy stand, whatever has to get done. We do. Greg made the right connections with the, the movie you know, companies. You know, it took some time and they knew it was a good location. That's the whole thing. And we just started doing it ourselves. And it pretty much worked out pretty good.